on today's show. I get all nerdy again. Good day everyone, my name's Chris and welcome to another episode of Tech Vibe. On this episode, I've been fortunate enough to get the Jedi Challenges by Lenovo. Now, for those who know me and this channel, you probably might have seen this video of me actually waving around my lightsaber. It's a nice sort of replica one that came from a company in America. Full details are over there, so if you want to go watch me geek out, feel free, go over there. These are some of the things we expect with some... <laughs> With a lightsaber handle, it's uh, it's very cheap feeling, it's plastic, there's very little metal of anything going on here, like honestly, I don't think there's anything metal on it, fine, whatever, um, it's just a toy after all, and uh, there's uh, two different buttons, there's this one here which you select with, and also use your force uh, later on, that's one of the game features, and also this black button here, which actually recenters the blade, and uh, I'll talk more about that later on. The handle also sports a vibration motor, which basically he seems to have just a few different sort of feels to it. It's nothing that's very scientific and definitely not like up to, let's say, iOS or Android phone type of vibration motor stuff. It's just, it vibrates. On the bottom, there's an on-off switch and also a power indicator. And there's also a port at the bottom that you can use to charge it using a micro USB cable. This beacon helps the headset actually understand where you are in the room and it actually has some uh, depth perception to it. So when you're playing one of the three different modes, you can actually move forward and backwards and around like, you know, the hollow chess. And it understands where you are based upon this little thing here. So yeah, soft squishy ball, two AA batteries that come packed in with the uh, packaging. It doesn't matter what color you turn it on to when you're by yourself. It's just basically, I guess, looking out for this light. <laughs> The beat. So here's the actual headset which you will slide your mobile phone into here on the side. Now this I like because these are actually see-through lenses and it projects the image and it, pro and it basically makes it look like a hologram. And for those Star Wars geeks out there, you've seen plenty of hollow chests and holograms within the Star Wars universe. and it's pretty impressive to see that and to realize it and to think you're playing with something that maybe in the future our kids might play with it feels very futuristic and um, the benefit also being able to see through those lenses is that you don't get the dizziness or the um, removal from reality so for those like me I get dizzy and I get headaches and I just don't find VR that compelling for those reasons so this I like there's two little cameras or sensors either side of the headset here, and I think they're actually used to pick up the light beacon on the floor to understand where it is in relation to you. Coming around to the other side, you've got three different buttons, which one, good luck remembering which does which, and then two, they underutilize them in the game. Like, I found more often than not, when you're done playing, you just want to get out of the game and you're, 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 you're finished. And you stuff around with these and you, you, nothing is happening. I think, honestly, they need to work on that. In terms of comfort and feel, it's pretty good. The head straps are comfortable and they actually feel very secure and I wasn't nervous about it coming off my head, even during some battle situations. Okay, so my thoughts on it. The good and the bad, and we'll start with the bad. Okay, first up. Definitely a little bit cheap and nasty this, and I think for when they originally released it at the price they did, they should have actually maybe charged less, okay? Um, next up, the recalibrate your blade to actually be in line, true line with your um, handle. It frequently happens and it can be super annoying. You're in the heat of a battle and your blade is on a tilt like this. And remember, it's a virtual thing. So check out on the screen what that kind of looks like now. So you have to hit this uh, center button, but you have to hold it, your blade still. So again, if you're in the heat of battle, it's not going to happen. And it's annoying us. And another bad point, and this is actually a really short list. The final bad point about this is, is the game. Now there has been an expansion pack since it was released, but I just found one, the challenge too easy, 
and well the three different modes so you've got the lightsaber duels which are kind of fun and engaging uh i bet again easy too easy um the uh chess board is boring slow and just i think it's something they decided to throw in there at the end i'm very sorry to the programmers that that's not the case but it just feels really undercooked that mode so complete skip and for those who like doing uh, strategic type games, there's there's a mode called strategic combat, and that's kind of like where you direct your troop, your troops, and your tanks, and your different parts to actually you know guard and stop the uh, lines from coming in on you. It's not a bad mode. I don't mind it, but again, it's too easy. So I think at the end of the day, if you love Star Wars, I think you probably should buy this. But if you're a casual gamer or you just don't really maybe care for all men of reality type things, definitely a firm skip. I've enjoyed my experience with it. Will I keep it? Maybe. I don't know. Check in with me in a few months. I'll let you know. So hey, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, give us a good thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe. Really appreciate the support. And if you do nothing, stay techy.